London is just one of the best cities because you guys have this housing crisis and there's so many people. And, you know, so I, I think London's such an incredible city for co-living and it's exciting to see so many of them opening up there. Yeah, I also think that, I mean, I obviously I've only been living, well, in the UK. I, never, I, I, I haven't always lived in central London, but I've always lived around London and in Italy. So I can't really say how it really is anywhere else from my point of view, obviously I've researched into it. But a great thing about London is that people have been used to live together for a long, long, long time. To go to a country like Italy, for example, it's harder because unless you are a student, once you kind of like grow up, you don't really want to share as much. It's changing now because of, you know, the economy is dictating that people can afford so they have to share, and, and I'm glad of it because actually I think for living, living together with people is very empowering. Hey, everybody. Christine here, founder of Kindred, with another fun episode of the Co-Living Code show. I really hope everybody's staying safe and healthy wherever you are out there in the world. I promise you we're going to get through this. Also, big news from the Kindred team, our book, The Co-Living Code, for large operators and then also the version for investors. Both versions just came out. We have a digital version, so you can reach out to our team for that link. And we also have them listed on Amazon if you'd like the print version. And this week, we brought on Katerina Maiolini. She is the London Mayor of Startup Home, the first social enterprise in the co-living space in Europe. And she is originally from Italy, so she has done Paris Fashion Week, a Milan Fashion Week, and that's actually where she was first exposed to co-living, which is great. You know, she would see young people from around the world gather into awesome cities like Paris and Milan and learned that a hotel could be a very lonely place. And she saw the demand for shared housing with like-minded people. You know, after five years, she's now a recognized expert in co-living and co-housing, extending her expertise from remote workers to senior citizens in co-housing. And we do talk about that a little bit on the show. And she arrived in London where she met Startup Home, which was already running, um, which is a social enterprise focused on building co-living communities for entrepreneurs and remote workers. And so she joined the team as the mayor of London. And it started four years ago, and then it grew into an international spot hosting guests from 41 countries around the world, and managing exchange programs with universities, angel syndicates, and investor associations. And the project was initially created to host tech startups moving to London from all over the UK and the world. And so it's kept that tech geeky side alive. And so we just had such a great conversation today. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode with Katerina with Startup Home in London. Hey everybody, it's Christine here with another fun episode of the Co-Living Code show. And today I have Katerina on with Startup Home in London. I know we've had a few people Hi everybody. In London. Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. Yes, and then you were, I know you joined us recently. We had a webinar and you were on there in the yeah. audience. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it's really good, really good. A lot of information. It was very interesting. And uh, I really, really enjoyed the Q&A at the end. It was really great to have the chance to have you there to reply to the questions like in real time. I know you're always available and you're super nice. You reply to all of us on LinkedIn and on all the socials. But having you there was like, yeah, I mean, let's, let's keep it right now. So it was really good. Oh, thanks. No, you guys, you guys were asking amazing questions. So it was fun to do it in real time. I work great on improv. So I love being asked questions. <laughs> it was fun. Good. So let's, I want to jump right in. You know, I know yeah, Startup sure. Home started four years ago. And I know you're the, I loved, because that's how I came across you, how you were called. You're the, the London mayor of Startup Home. So I love the title <laughs> mayor. So definitely like to be the mayor of a co-living community. I would love to dive into that first. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, um, so this startup home only, uh, originally launched actually in 2018. So it's two and something years that we've gone. Um, there was, uh, there's a funny story about it actually before this startup home. Um, there was something else, and uh, it, it, it's a really funny story because it was a group of international startups that moved into London uh, to join a big accelerator program, which is in the Canary Wharf area. 
And Landlord, as you might know, because I know you've interviewed a lot of people from London and the UK, were quite hesitant to rent to young people and to entrepreneurs. And so what happened is at the time, one of the mentors rented a big house and he offered the room to the startup. And I think at the time, the name was actually Startup Bootcamp. And the mentor is Stefano Dresta, who I still work with and I still collaborate with. Uh, but Startup Home, I, our Startup Home originally launched in 2018. And he came up with this title, if you want to call it, of uh, House Mayor. Because he wanted to be slightly, you know, it's, I'm not just a community manager, I'm not just a house manager, I'm not a property manager, I am kind of like supervise a bit everything, but I also let people choose what they do. So, you know, it's quite, in a sort of way, democratic. So I think house mayors should make quite well. I love that. No, I think the best <laughs> communities are ran in a democratic way. So that's very, that's awesome. And so, yeah. um, and do you live, do you live on site or do you live separately? No, no, no. So uh, I do. I live here. Uh, I am obviously part of a uh, of startup home and uh, I, I, I love it. Like I absolutely love, love living here. I, um, you know, I, I wanted to develop and open more co-living because of uh, my experience I had while I was traveling for fashion week, especially but also myself being an expat and someone who moved to a different city in a different country. Um, personally, I really did not, and, and I still don't like living on my own. So I, I really absolutely love our community living here. And obviously myself being the house mayor, I really get to be involved on the day to day a lot. And so where, what country did you move from? What city? Italy. Not a good time at the moment, is it? Oh, I know. Yeah. You're, you're safe in Probably London I, now. You're safe in London. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I come from the north, from the north area of Italy. So come on, we can do it. We can fight this. Definitely. Definitely. I love Italy. So yes. Um, the, so in yeah, the, the, um, yeah, go on. How many rooms do you guys have total? How many residents? Yeah, so um, the startup home in Islington has 12, uh, it's 12 of us and there is 10 rooms. So at the moment is occupied by 12 people and we have a mix of um, singles and couples. Um, you know, I, I really do like to welcome couples into our community. I really think they bring something more to it. I really think they enrich it. And, you know, couples are part of everyday life. So it's, you know, I, I, I love that. I love having them here. And also sometimes it's also difficult for them to find a place to be, you know, especially if it's, if it's too, you know, our, our focus are entrepreneurs and remote workers. So if it's two of them, it's even a bigger asset to the community. Or that's what I think anyway. No, that's true. I love that. And then the, um, so the events you have written behind you. So I'd love to dive into what kind of events you guys host. I even see Matt, the word mastermind back there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, it's, it's, very, um, it's very interesting because obviously, as I was saying to you, we are a community of 12 and uh, I quite like the guys to be as, well, as involved as possible into the community and into what happens in startup homes. So we have a social every week and uh, friends and anyone else is very welcome to come around. Uh, we really truly enjoy board games and we're quite passionate about poker. <laughs> and we, get, uh, yeah, we do get quite competitive, which is very good. But it's also very funny because there, there is also always a little bit of underlining of big element to all of it, which is really nice. Um, so what you see uh, at the back is a mastermind. So we've just started our mastermind, which will be a monthly event. And what we will do is that um, members of our community, normally one person who's got a particular skill or, um, you know, understands that maybe he, can, he or she can put their skills forward to help the community, um, decides a date together with me, obviously suiting their availability. And then we gather everybody around for literally a mastermind. So 
all of us bring what we know and what we need and this person kind of like helped us to overcome whatever. And at this event, obviously, you know, friends and anyone else is welcome as well. That's awesome. No, that's, no, and we do the same at our house too. That's why I asked. We do weekly masterminds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, I know you're based in Los Angeles, right? We're in San, yeah, Los, well, San Diego. My house now's in San Diego. Okay, so it's, um, London is an extremely busy city as well. So having weekly masterminds would be quite difficult for the calendars of all of the guys and the girls. So we started with monthly and, you know, we do weekly social, which sometimes turns into a mastermind anyway, because we always come up with different topics and we always talk about problems that we have and we help each other solving them. So, yeah. Another event I'm actually very excited is... Um, so we collaborate a lot with the locals. That's what uh, is extremely important to me and also part of us being a social enterprise. Um, and uh, we've done a couple of events with the students from uh, the university as well, which is not far from here. Some of the PhD students. But uh, this month in particular, we are doing a, a two days workshop, which is actually four hours, so two and two. Uh, with Nora, who is a personal trainer, but she's also a nutritionist, and she will focus on obviously body and mind and well-being and how we can do that as entrepreneur, remote worker, uh, maybe if we don't leave the house so often. So she will focus very much on stress management and also on a better house being, something like that, like well-being in the house. Awesome. And then the, um, the other question I just thought of too, do you guys, what kind of businesses are, do, do the residents own? Oof, okay. So our, our, the focus of Startup Home is obviously entrepreneur and remote workers. Okay. okay. This, is, this is literally our uh, focus. So, whew, 12 of us. Um, so, we have, we vary anyone from a uh, Peter who has a, a business already and he actually has a, an app that is part of Shopify and he's developing that even further. But he then wants to do something completely different in London. That's why he came and he joined us. Then we have a food app developer. And then we have uh, someone who is expert and has his own company in hedge fund on blockchain. Uh, then we have someone who is developing website, especially focusing on coaching. And then we have someone else who joined us recently and they have um, something called the Weekend University. And he really focused on psychology and well-being because uh, he really understood that to study that, it takes a lot of time and it, takes, it is quite expensive. So he wanted to make it more accessible to people that didn't have as much time and as much money. And then you have me, obviously I run Startup Home, but I'm also still involved uh, a little bit in the fashion world as a producer. And gosh, and then we have Kwame, who is um, a designer and he creates a lot of really cool things, but he also likes a bit of trading. It's a very nice mix. It's a really interesting mix. And then the, you know, obviously the people coming on from London, I have to ask this question. With Brexit, you know, obviously you guys are splitting off from Europe. And I know, like, I think you guys even said, you know, you guys are, are the only, you guys are the first social enterprise co-living home in Europe, right? Or in the UK, yeah. however you want to word yeah. it now. <laughs> yeah. Has Brexit had any impact at all, you think, in your community? Okay, so in our community right now, it hasn't at all. And I think we are not particularly worried because until the end of the year, not really much is going to change. But I also know, um, it's not official yet, but reading the newspaper and keep it updated with it. Uh, I know that the UK government is extremely supportive of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. So I, I really don't see that as a problem coming, you know, moving forward at all. I always also, I'm also a great believer that in any problem you have, there is a solution out there, as long as we, you know, we are willing to find it and to understand it. And that's what we are here for as well, you know, moving forward, the more we will be able to have entrepreneurs to move over, 
if they want to, then, you know, the better it would be for us. I mean, that's how we started at the beginning anyway. That's true. And then do you guys have co-working space on site? So, um, we don't have a proper co-working space inside. We have a, um, like we don't have a separate one. So we have a very large living room with a massive table, and that's where we all work from sometimes. And then I set up another table in the kitchen, which is what I'm talking to you right now, and um, which is another area. Where we've got different kitchens in the house, and this is one of the largest ones. So this is another area where people can come and work from. Uh, it's two very different areas, uh, two very different lighting, two very different environments. The great thing about being in the kitchen here is that you can shut the door and you kind of like can be a bit private, like I'm doing right now, uh, while the living room is more, I don't want to say social, because sometimes we are there and we concentrate just on work, but it's open so anyone can come in and out. And also the great thing, what I really like about being in the kitchen, is exactly what you see at the back, which is uh, the wall, which I, I painted myself uh, with like black charcoal or paint. And it's great because whilst you're having meeting, you can actually, there is the, the all of the other side of the wall. You can scrabble if you need to, you can just brainstorm, you can do all of these sorts of things. And, and it's great because you can leave it here after and you can kind of like go back into it and look at it and think about it, you can call the guys from the house and you know ask feedback, or, or actually a lot of time it happens that we walk into the kitchen and we go like, who's got, who had the meeting today? What is that? Can you tell us a bit more about it? And it becomes very interactive. I love that. No, just last night, one of the housemates wrote on the white you know, dry erase board a bunch of like some sort of framework. And it's fun because the rest of us kind of have to guess like, oh, I wonder who wrote that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's it's nice. It just makes you know that that's what that's what that's, I also do believe that's the whole point of co-living, right? It's sharing all of that thing. Sometimes you're so busy, you know, like you like me and you will have this, you know, a podcast or this video now, and then maybe I forgot to tell someone. But if we write something down, then someone will come in and say, "What is that?" And then I can tell them what I did, and I can explain, or I can ask feedback, and it's just great. Right. That's awesome. And then, so the other question I had was, um, are there any, what are some co-living, um, you know, just on a global level, what are some of your favorite co-living communities? Do you have any brands that you just love? Mm, so, I mean, I, like a brand, brand, probably not. Like, like a just one brand. I really like a lot of things that a lot of different people are doing. Um, you know, we, we are based in UK right now, so obviously I've taken a lot of inspiration from the UK ones, from the very big ones, you know, so obviously from the collective, I know he's been your guest a few times. Um, you know, I, I think our co-living is very different. Obviously, we are a social enterprise and we are focused on smaller community. Um, but, but there's a lot of interesting thing that you can take from everything. Uh, you know, Urban Shares, Gun is also a good friend of mine. And again, his co-living is different, but I really like what he's doing with regard to the art and to kind of like connecting the community in a slightly different way. So by not necessarily living together in the same place. Um, I also like obviously what Rob and the guys from, you know, Gravity are doing. Uh, they're actually our neighbors, so they're just up the road. So I went to see Rob a few times and, Obviously, you know, he's, uh, you know, the other guy is Italian as well. So oh, yes. we are all, we're all Italian. So hey, hoo, hoo. <laughs> and, and, and I really like how they, you know, how, you know, you, you, they've, they've been on your show. So, you know, they have two different buildings, but they are connected. And it's really quite nice as well. And I think everybody's bringing something. I don't want to say new, but I think also the more we, we go forth, the more, you know, everybody will, all, every co-living, let's say, provider or, or society or, or company will kind of like go even more specific into what they really are and who they're really in a sort of way targeting. No, definitely. I agree with that. Yeah. And it's been fun. It's fun because, yeah, they just came on the show recently too. So, and and it, it's, I mean, it, it, there's, there's a lot of them which are also quite unknown. Like in October, I went to, um, to Serbia for a conference, the, the co 
speaking and co-working conference for Southeast Europe. <laughs> so the name was really long. The so Belgrade was fantastic. And they also have some colleagues in there, which are my, they might not be as, in a sort of way, as famous, uh, we don't know, but they are coming up with some really cool idea. And yeah, I, I, I like that. Maybe I just, I also really, really like to look into like the smaller providers and to see how, you know, they are bespoke services and, you know, how they provide to a certain niche maybe of, uh, you know, people. You know, and London is just one of the best cities because you guys have this housing crisis and there's so many people. And, you know, so I, I think London's such an incredible city for co-living and it's exciting to see so many of them opening up there. Yeah, I also think that, I mean, I obviously I've only been living, well, in the UK. I, never, I, I, I haven't always lived in central London, but I've always lived around London and in Italy. So I can't really say how it really is anywhere else from my point of view. Obviously, I've researched into it. But the great thing about London is that people have been used to live together for a long, long, long time. To go to a country like Italy, for example, it's harder because unless you are a student, once you kind of like grow up, you don't really want to share as much. It's changing now because of, you know, the economy is dictating that people can afford so they have to share, and, and I'm glad of it because actually I think living, living together with people is very empowering. It is definitely, and I, it's so exciting to see that shift on a global level. Even the countries that are usually very isolated, they like their space, they like living alone, even they are starting to switch, which is good, which is nice to see. Yeah, but I also think that is because, um, you know, co-living has come on so strong and it's also kind of like fashionable now, right? It's like, it's super cool to say that you live in a co-living, that you don't live like, you don't share a house with other people, but you are in a co-living. So co-living is fine, you know? It makes you sound more grown up. So I, that is like the perfect sound bite. I agree, like you're exactly right. It is like being viewed as cool now, right? Yeah, super. Yeah, I love it. You know, if, if back in the days you were a bit, you know, people would say like, oh, how old are you? Well, you still share a house. You know, now it's like, really? You live in a, that is so cool. Like, who are the people that you live with? But I also think that it's obviously, as co-living providers, you know, and we are very different right now, right? Like, you, you, you often talk about onboarding, and I agree, onboarding is such an important part of it. Well, if you, if you just rent a room somewhere, as long as, you know, you have the funds and you can prove that you can pay the rent, you'll be welcome. But in, in our co-living spaces, it's slightly different, right? You know, we target, you know, for as a startup home is entrepreneurs and remote workers, people that are interested in this sort of world. Other co-living might be targeting other people, but whoever, you know, you've been interviewing, whoever I've been speaking to, the onboarding is, is extremely important. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's like, it's, cur yeah, because you're, cur you're taking the time to curate the community. And so I think you're right. And then it's that more important when you move in, like, oh, this is really cool. Like there's actually effort put into building this community and the type of people that live there. And you're right. I mean, every, even events we host, um, and that's really cool. You know, everybody's like blown away when they come into the home, you know, and they're like, this is so cool. What a great, you know, great way to live. You guys can throw these events and there's activities and there's always somebody home. So, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. you know, the more and more events people can host at their communities, co-living communities, the better. Because then you're just giving yeah. even more exposure to the concept of co-living. But also, um, you know, I, I don't know if you feel like that, but I, I feel so privileged but also excited to be part of this movement because I really believe that we are shaping the way people will be living. I already think we are doing it now but the more we are going to go I think we will be shaping even more you know how people are living, how societies are you know by, by coming in with uh, co-living in different areas and repurposing building which I know you are also a big fan of. Um, you know, we will also be able to reshape community, you know, make a community strong again, and, you know, make community in tribes again. And, and I think, you know, that massive change, you know, we will only be seeing it in like a few years to come, that it's, it's, I can really see that it's really changing because exactly what you were saying, 
you know, from, oh, you, you're sharing a house to, it's so cool, like your housemates are extremely cool and the members of your colleagues are, are really nice. And when I come there, it's very exciting. We always talk about things, you know. It's, 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 it, I really believe the right world is empowering. No, and I'm just thinking now, you know, and again, this is, you know, I know it's such a hot topic and, um, you know, with the coronavirus, now, now people are having to work from home right now, which I'm a yeah. massive advocate for remote work already. Yep. But however, yep. I mean, imagine if you live alone, now you can't go into your office to socialize with your coworkers, right? So it's like, then I think even more people are going to be like, well, gosh, this isn't fun. Now I have to work from home. Now I'm staying in my house. Like I can't really go anywhere. I can't go to public spaces, yeah. you know, versus again, in our home, it's like, we're a big group, you know, Hey, do we come up with a plan? What do we do? Like, it's comforting yeah. to know, you know, there's six of us that were like, Oh, well, we'll figure it out regardless. Even if we, but if we have to work from home, you know, I think most of the house now is working from home. I'm in my office, but nobody else is in my office. Really, it's pretty dead today. So, um, yeah, it's already I, happening in there as well. I didn't know it was already this big in there. Also, it's the. I mean, mostly it's the media, but yeah, definitely here in the states, it's becoming a very big deal. Even in California, like the shelves are being emptied out from water and supplies, and there's like hysteria that's beginning. And so, um, I mean, I guess for some people, it's better be better to be safe than sorry. Um, yeah. It just, you know, more than anything, it's going to have like a massive economic effect on a macro level because everybody's yeah. kind of freaking out and. Um, yeah. so that's sad to see. So hopefully it gets, you know, today's the beginning of March, hopefully it gets under control sooner than later. Um, but again, you know, now we're as a team and, you know, co-living and it's like, you know, even if we have to stay at home or work from home, like there's yeah. people around, we're interacting with people, but people living alone, I don't, you know, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really funny because we were having this conversation on our WhatsApp group just today. Exactly that, because uh, obviously, you know, as, as, as you've been following the news and everything, Italy is in a bad situation, yeah. and now it's obviously coming everywhere. The good thing about it, if we can say the good thing, is that we've obviously all seen it, so as it moves, we kind of like start to be a bit more prepared. So, you know, we put in the house all the gel sanitizer and all of the And one of the guys, in fact, Peter, was saying this morning, Okay, so this is my plan. A lot of vitamin C, a lot of water, a lot of, you know, papers and supplies and everything that we need. We stock up on board game and that's it. We shut the house for 14 days and that is it. <laughs> and I was thinking it's going to be the same as you said. And I was thinking, wow, you know, imagine if you, are, you really are on your own. It's, just, it's, it's not extremely hard nowadays because through technology we are connected constantly, but it's still quite tough. But instead, it's so many of us, so you can't really get never bored at all. And, you know, whatever you feel, someone is always here and is always ready to help, which I think is the greatest thing about co-living, really. So, yeah, stock up on board games. That's great advice to anybody listening. <laughs> That's cool. Geeky. Geeky is obviously board games. Okay. Okay. Like we which wouldn't ones? have it any other way. No. Now you got to tell us, which ones are your guys' favorites? <laughs> Okay, so uh, we have a play. Uh, 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 me personally, I like a game called Dominion. It's uh, very interesting. You just kind of like get territories and all that sort of thing. And there's another one which is called Carcassonne, which the guys play quite a lot. I haven't really mastered it yet, but uh, yeah, they're all they're they're geeky in a way that you have to really kind of like think about stuff and you need to come on with a plan and you need to be very good at logistics and planning and doing all that sort of thing, you know, to store stuff so that you can invest in the future. And also I absolutely love me personally. I love working and not sorry, playing uh, cash flow. It's Ooh, another yeah. really good game. Cash flow yeah. is an amazing one for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, don't business entrepreneurs playing monopoly is like, the, <laughs> it was like, I was like, Oh yeah, this is a lot different when you're trying to play monopoly with, uh, with a bunch of entrepreneurs and business owners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I mean, from my point of view, I prefer cash flow better. Yeah, it, for sure. Because it kind of like shows you, you know, how strong together we can be while monopoly is a bit like, it's all about me, you know, as much as I can get. Yeah, no, you're right. Cash flow is incredible. That's a way, way better option for sure. Um, and you guys have your poker nights too. So that's, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. 
I mean, since Peter arrived, one of our members, he, he's like a proper, he's really good actually. And um, he loses a lot, sorry Peter, but is it true? Uh, he loses a lot, but uh, uh, he's, he's taught us to play on a very high level. So we are very much enjoying now. Yeah. Oh, good. good. And then, what is we only play for fun though. Yeah. And Katarina, what's the ratio of guys versus girls? Okay, right now we have uh, one, two, three, four girls and eight guys. Okay, so got yeah. it, got it. So Amazing. yeah, we had uh, we had another girl, she left, and now another guy came in. So I'd, I'd say probably the majority is always boys uh, compared to girls, but we're keeping up. Yeah, no, good for you guys. That's, strong. that's yeah. awesome. So, so my last question that I ask everybody is, where do you personally see co living? If we fast forward ten years to the year twenty thirty, uh, where do you see yeah. co living? Yeah, I mean, as as we mentioned before, I I I personally really don't think that right now we can truly envision what will happen, uh, because I sincerely believe that it will be huge, even more than maybe what we are thinking, predicting, and imagining. And I believe the great thing is that it will be across the whole industry that we mentioned before, but mainly also across all ages. Um, and yeah, obviously, as I said before, you know, I feel super excited to be a part of it right now. And, uh, you know, the fact that we are shaping how we live with each other and how we connect with each other. On, uh, on my personal side, on a personal note, um, one of my biggest goals is also to make living more available for older generations. Uh, uh, we, we spoke about this on your, um, on your webinar. I did ask you this sort of question. Uh, we're obviously talking here about, for me at least, from a very different setup, a very different target. Uh, pretty much different everything from, from the current setup that we have, which is more focused obviously on young entrepreneurs and remote workers. But I really do strongly believe that living it will be uh, the best, it is actually the best solution for loneliness and also for this sort of detachment that has happened to us from one another, which I think obviously are some big problems in you know, our current society. And then, you know, um, I, I really think living in a sort of way, this might sound very poetic, but I really think it's what will heal, you know, us and our soul. And again, I do believe that, you know, if alone we are strong together, we are much stronger, much, much stronger. Yes. Yeah. And of course, on, I mean, to top all of that, we will be seeing a huge network of startup homes all around the world. Oh, yes. What, what, is some ne what are some next locations coming up? Uh, so they're all TBC at the moment. We are, uh, we are working with uh, a few different ones. I mean, personally, obviously, I would like to see a startup home everywhere. Yes. Um, I really like what we do and, you know, our core values and what we want to do and how we, you know, how we interact with the local communities, etc. But, um, you know, a startup home will not be just a, a house that uh, eventually will be also like a 360 you know, degree service, let's say, for the entrepreneurs. And so we are working towards that as well. So uh, there's a lot of work to do. But uh, yeah, next locations will be revealed very soon. Great. Well, we will be watching. I love what you guys are doing with the startup community, the remote workers. Like, I think that's such a perfect niche. And it'll be exciting to yep. see more of that coming up, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I am very excited. Yay. I also think it's, uh, it's you know, I, I really, you know, I, I'm going to repeat myself again, but I really do believe that, you know, together we are stronger and uh, it's, uh, it's very important. I mean, you know, together as a, you know, people that live together, together as a community of co livings like, you know, the more we are, the stronger we are. So it's, it's just great. Definitely. Well, Katerina, thank you so much for coming on this show this week. We really appreciate um, it. That's okay. Thank you for having me and see you at your next webinar. Yes, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Ciao. Thank you so much for checking out today's episode. If you want to learn more about co-living, you could check out my book on Amazon, The Co-Living Code. And of course, if you're looking for the perfect software to power your co-living concept, check out kindred.io, K-N-D-R-D.io. Thanks. And a quick thank you to SPX Agency for all of the graphics, animation, and design on our YouTube channel.